Oh shit, we on? Okay, okay. So, it's the weekend, and you know what that means. It means going to a screening of a horror movie in the AM and getting that sick discount, which, you know, I'm kind of all about. Like, yeah, I didn't see the first Ouija movie. I saw CinemaSins take on it. I think that's good enough, because it looked like generic trash, and I, even I'm better than that, okay? So... But I think something must have happened when they were making Origin of Evil. I think somebody actually tried, because I gave a shit, you know? Like, I cared about the story. I was interested in what was going to happen. I'm actually kind of amazed. This movie is not bad. But anyway, here to spoil it. So, like, the movie starts off with what happened in the beginning of the trailer. Like, they do a seance in this lady's house. Fuck, I don't know her name. She's a mom. We're gonna call her mom. Fuck it. So, yeah. They're doing a seance with this guy and his daughter, and then, like, he get, he gets this shit scared out of him, and, like, they leave and whatever, and... The mom's like, she's yelling at her daughter because her daughter was supposed to just stand outside the curtain and not, like, fucking wave around and scare shit. Yeah. So, she's pretty pissed off about that. And she's got, she's got her other daughter just, like, I don't know, doing some shit with candles in the, in, like, a hidden compartment or something. So, she's got her daughter Doris, who's, like, nine, and Lena, who's a teenager. And, yeah. So... You find out that, like, they're having financial troubles after the father died, and yeah. So, uh, like, that night, Lena decides to sneak out to her friend's house where they're having coffee. This is, like, it's alcohol, right? And then she sees, like, a Ouija board just sitting in the corner of the room, and she's like, hey, is that that spirit board thing? And her friend's like, yeah, do you want to try it? And she's got, like, two other friends there and a guy, and... Yeah, they they go to a dark room, which I assume is just the girl's bedroom, and they're just sitting on the ground playing with the Ouija board, and they're like, we have to follow the rules. Rule number one, don't play it alone. Then don't play it in a graveyard. And uh, uh, always say goodbye. But nobody in the movie ever says goodbye. Ever. Pretty sure. Anyway, um, yeah, so like... They don't really, like, no spirits show up. It's, it's all bullshit. But then there's a jump scare anyway, because, like, the mom comes home and, like, she bursts into the bedroom. She's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And she calls Lena's mom and then she has to come pick her up. And Lena says, I know you're pissed off at me, but, like, you should totally add that Ouija board to your act because I think it would really help out. Yeah. And, like, it would be more convincing, something like that. So, yeah. So we go through, like, a bunch of, like, daily shit for them. Like, the mom picks Doris up from school, and she's, like, she's getting bullied by these two asshole kids who are just assholes for no reason. But then, like, they get told off by this priest guy who is also the principal, I guess. And, like, the mom talks to him, and they... I guess they have, like, a, a slight bit of, like, romantic shit going on, but not really. Like, we can't even get away from, like, fucking romance scenes in movies, even when the guy's a priest. Like, come on. <sighs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's cliche, alright? Like, they're different genders. They don't have to have a thing going on. Whatever. Anyway. So... I don't know, eventually the mom, she buys a Ouija board and she just brings it home and she's like, she's like, yo, this is going to be part of our act from now on. And she does this thing where she puts magnets on the bottom of the planche, planche, planchette, I don't, I don't fucking know, whatever, plancha. And she like puts magnets on her knees so that she'll be able to move the plancha like, without using her hands, right? Which is actually pretty fucking clever. You never actually get to see it in action, but she's just, like, she's testing it. She's like, is anybody here? And then, unknowingly, Doris upstairs gets fucking possessed by it, 
and she starts answering she's like yes and then she says like who's here and then dora says marcus and lena's in the room with her and she's like what the fuck are you talking about and then <laughs> she's like spirits can you hear me and she, and dora says yes we can hear you and we can see you and then then like she ends the thing and then doris is back to normal doesn't remember anything that just happened so you know great <sighs> all right and then i believe what happens next is doris she thinks that like she can contact her dad through like the ouija board like she comes downstairs in the middle of the night she starts playing with the ouija board and it says hi friend and um yeah so she looks through like she holds the planche up to her eye like in the first movie and like she looks around i think she sees something i don't fucking remember and yeah so mm. the next day like the mom gets called into the school and the she's she's meeting with the priest and he's like have you been helping her with her homework and She's like, maybe not as much as I ha as much as I should, like what's going on? And he's like, well, she wrote all of the answers to her homework in cursive, and she hasn't learned that yet. So Doris is just like, my friend helped me. Fucking whatever. And they ask her, like, who's your friend? She shrugs. But like, I have to question this, like, why you would even write in cursive in the first place, like, even if you knew how to do it. Writing in cursive sucks ass. Everybody hates writing in cursive. Whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, they go home and, like, they're in the car and Doris is like, she's like, he's like, my friend helped me. I let them use my hand. Of course. So, they get home and they see, like, oh, foreclosure notice on their house because fucking financial issues. And they're just like, shit, we might have to move. But then... Like, Doris, she's like, she's like, I better tell Dad about this. So she pulls out the Ouija board, sets it on the table, and, like, she starts, like, trying to talk to the dad. And Lena's like, oh, fuck, this sucks ass. So she goes out and sits on the porch, and, like, she talks to her mom, and she's all like, she's like, and the mom is like, I don't want to have to move out of here because, like, this was your dad's house. Like, this is, like, all that's left of him, right? And they're all, like, sad and shit. But, like, in the background, you can see Doris wandering off to, like, the basement. And then it cuts to her in the basement. And she goes behind the furnace and she pulls some, like, rocks off the wall. And she pulls out, like, a fucking bag out of a hole. And then she comes back upstairs and she gives the bag to her mom. And her mom's just like, what's this? And she looks inside. It's like hundreds of dollars inside the bag and she's like where did you get this and she's like i found it in the basement <laughs> i'll show you and then she shows them and they're just like how do you know about this and she's like dad told me of course and then they do this thing with the ouija board they're all sitting around it and they're like okay well we gotta like if this is legitimate we gotta prove this shit so like, Lena thinks it's all bullshit, right? So she, like, she stands back, and she's like, what the fuck is this? And the mom's like, like, I think the dad's name is Roger. She's like, Roger, when I told you I was pregnant with Lena, where did I tell you? Like, where were you when I told you? And then it spells out shower, and she's like, only he would have known that. And, yeah. Like, they're not holding it, I don't think. No, wait, they are. Yeah, they are. But, um... Then they find out, like, they don't need to hold it, because, like, apparently Doris can, like, move it with her mind or some shit, and it just starts moving on its own. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, everybody gets, like, really freaked the fuck out, but they think, like, oh, this could be, like, really helpful for the business. And I think, yeah, like... Mm, I think, like, it, it cuts to Lena at school, and the priest, like, calls her in to his office, like, after he interrupts her from, like, kissing a boy, which is, like, really, come on. So then he's like, why hasn't Doris been at school for, like, the past four days? And Lena's like, well, she's been working with my mom. 
And you go back to, like, the house, and you find out that, like, <laughs> Doris has been doing, like, these psychic readings with the Ouija board, and, like, she takes her hands off the plancha, and it moves around on its own, and <laughs> then, then she, like, this lady's, like, is my dad proud of me? And then she, like, turns to her and, like, says in, like, a man's voice, always, which legitimately freaked me out for a second. You got me, movie. Anyway, so, yeah, the lady leaves, and then, like, I think Doris's neck starts hurting, and she's like, what the fuck is going on? And then, like, she wakes up in the middle of the night, and she goes into Lena's bedroom, and she's like, yo, my neck hurts. And Lena's like, here, take this and go back to sleep. Because she gives her, like, a pill or something. I don't know. So, yeah. Then they all go back to sleep. But then, like, another sort of, like, jump scare thing. Like, Doris, like, she, like, jolts out of bed. She's like, Jesus fucking Christ, my neck hurts. So she walks downstairs, and then she starts using the Ouija board again. She's like, blah, blah, blah. Why is my neck hurting? Is anybody there? Can you help me? But nobody answers. So she picks up the plancha, puts it to her eye, and, like, she sees, like, a shadow or something and, like, here's a bump or whatever, and it leads her to a mirror, and she looks through it again, and, like, this fucking guy in, like, a gimp suit is there? Like, I know he's supposed to be just, like, a demon with, like, black skin and fucking yellow ass eyes. <sighs> he looks like he's into some weird shit. I'm not- I'm, I'm just saying. Anyway, so he basically, like, he punches her in the mouth, as in, like, he sticks his fucking- like arm down her throat and then like she gets bent over backwards and it's super gross and disgusting and her mouth is all stretched out and it's fucking nasty yeah and then she is she is possessed i presume i guess so like then we cut up to it's Lena's room, and, like, the sheets are starting to get pulled off of her, but she, like, keeps pulling them back, and then, like, they get yanked off of her because it's super scary, and she's like, Doris, what the fuck, but Doris isn't there, and she's like, well, shit, and then she just grabs her blanket and, like, pulls it back up, but, like, in the background, you see a motherfucker with, like, spooky eyes and shit, yeah, and then, like, Doris is there, and, like, it, like, zooms in on her back, and Doris is, like, She's, like, whispering some shit in her ear, and I'm just like, wow, okay, that's incredibly terrifying. And she's, like, got blanked out pupils and shit, and, like, it, you can't understand what she's saying, and, oh, god. Actually terrifying. Like, I can't even believe it. So, then, like, I don't know, they keep doing that shit with... Oh, yeah, okay, what happens is, um... The mom goes out to dinner with the priest, which is a little bit iffy on my part, you know. But, like, apparently he just wanted to talk to her about, like, the girls in, um, in a private place where, like, the girls wouldn't be able to hear about it. And the mom's, like, trying to say, yo, this shit is real. And the priest is, like, whatever. And they talk about, like, their dead spouses and shit. And they're, like, he's, like, maybe in another life we could have gotten together. And I'm, like, this doesn't need to be a romance, but whatever. And... Then, like, back at the house, the two kids are watching TV, but, um, then Lena's boyfriend comes over, and they go upstairs, and Doris stays downstairs watching TV, and then, like, Lena and the boy, they kiss upstairs, and I'm just like, well, he's dead, and then he's like, I better leave, and she's like, yeah, because my mom will kill you, and he walks back downstairs, it's, like, been, like, an hour, and... <laughs> He looks over to, like, see if Doris is watching TV. She's gone. And then, like, camera cuts back to him. She's behind him, and he's like, he's like, oh, shit, you scared the crap out of me. She's like, do you want to hear something neat? <laughs> and then he's like, sure. And she says, do you know what it's like to choke to death? And, like, the description she gives, like, sounds rather accurate and terrifying. She's like, she's like, First, there's, like, a flame in your chest, and, like, it grows bigger, and then you're cold, and I'm just like, this is legitimately fucking terrifying, and then the boyfriend leaves, and then Doris just, like, goes back to watching TV, but it's, like, it's, like, the, it's, like, the in-between program thing that they had in the 60s, I guess, I don't know, yeah, 
Like, I don't know why he dared to come back to the house after that, but whatever. So, yeah. Then, I think... Mm. What does happen next? Oh, yeah, um... The next day, um... Like... I think Lena, like, she walks past Doris's room and Doris is like, she's writing some shit on some papers, but she's looking the other direction. Okay. And then she goes to her room and she sees this doll that she has that her dad gave her is like, the lips are sewn up on it. And she's like, she's like, Doris, what the fuck is this shit? And Doris is like, I didn't do it. Dad did it to stop the voices. So they get into an argument and they're just like, the mom and Lena are arguing, like, how is this possible? And she's like, I don't know, and fucking arguing and shit, like, whatever. So, mm. Then eventually, like, I think what happened was, is the priest comes over. He's like, no, wait, no, wait. He doesn't come over until later. I'm fucking stupid. I'm sorry. I don't, this movie, like, scared my memory right out of me. Fucking Christ. So then, like, <laughs> They have to go to school the next day, and Doris is, like, freaking out. She's like, I don't want to go to school and shit. And the mom's like, Lena, go get your sister stuff so she can get ready for school. And then she goes up into her bedroom, and she finds, like, the pages that she was writing on under the bed, and she grabs them, and, like, they're in Polish, which is also in the trailer. You should probably know this already. So she takes them to the priest, and she's like, yo, do you know anybody about here that, like, speaks Polish? <laughs> and... He's like, well, this one nun came came here from Poland during the war. And she's like, okay, thanks, bye. And, oh my god, okay. So, like, later that night, the priest comes over and he's like, he's like, I wanted to take you up on that whole seance reading thing. Because, like, he had a dead wife that, like, he was married before he became a priest. And he's, and he started, like... They start doing, like, the reading with the board, and he's like, what's your middle name? And they say Lynn, and, like, then it types out, like, don't hide behind the collar. I just want you to be, and then Doris says happy in, like, an older woman's voice. And, yeah, the priest is kind of freaked out, but he's like, and he's like, okay, that was real fucking neato, kid. But then he says, Lena got in some trouble at school today. I want to talk to you about it. And they're like, we got to go talk in Lena's room because, like, this is something private. And Doris stays downstairs. And then they end up talking in Doris's room. And, like, the priest, he pulls out the notes. Like, he has the notes with him. And he's like, yo, that shit with the Ouija board... That shit wouldn't fake, but, like, sort of fake. Like, he says, my my wife's middle name was, like, something other than Lynn. And they're like, what? And he's like, when I asked the question, I focused on the name Lynn. And, like, for some other questions and stuff, it was all, like, generic bullshit that she made up. And, like, the voice could have been any woman's voice, but they only said one word, so it would be impossible to tell. And he's like, that's part of the trick. She can, like, read minds and shit, I guess. Yeah. So then, so then the mom's like, well, what the fuck does this mean? And he pulls out the notes and he's like, this was written in Polish. And I brought this to like the sister who could read Polish and she translated it for me. It's about, it's written by a man named Marcus who, um, who came here. He was like experimented on in the second world war and... He came to America, and he was on the streets, and then eventually he ended up in an institution. And, like, while this is all going on, like, you can hear the voiceover of the priest. <sighs> Lena's boyfriend shows up downstairs, and... <laughs> uh, he literally says, what's the skinny, because it's the 60s. And, like, Doris is all like... Yo, did you hear about, like, that money I found in the basement? He's like, yeah, I did. And she's like, there's more down there. Do you want to see? And he's like, okay. And she's like, she takes him down there. And meanwhile, the priest is still, like, talking about, like, like, apparently one of the doctors 
from the Second World War. Like, he showed up at the asylum or institution Marcus was at, and then he, like, kidnapped him from the institution and brought him back to his house to, like, a secret room in the basement with, like, a bunch of other people, and he did, like, crazy fucking experiments on them, and, like, he cut out their tongues so they couldn't, like, scream and shit. Yeah. It was fucked up. And meanwhile, Doris is, like... <laughs> Sweet fucking Jesus. This is... Dude. Okay. So the boyfriend, she shows him the hole behind the furnace, and he's reaching in there, and he finds, like, a bag that's full of, um... It's full of, like, IDs or some shit. I don't know. And, um... Then, while he's looking through the bag, you can see her out of focus. Like, Doris is in the background, and her neck is cracking... She's got a weird, creepy smile face. Her eyes are blank. It's so fucking spooky. Like, I can't even believe it. <sighs> that shit's gonna haunt my nightmares. And, like, then he reaches in there again. And then, like, bam, a fucking skull head, like, falls into, like, falls out of the hole. And, <laughs> like, earlier he had said, like, the house had some good bones because his dad is in, is in architecture. And then Dora says, you were right, this house does have some good bones. <sighs> Even the fucking ghosts get quips in these movies, god damn it. Anyway, so she grabs him and, like, she starts whispering into his ear to, like, possess him. I assume that's what it does, I don't know. Anyway, so she does that and meanwhile, they're still upstairs talking and they're just like, there's like, they've been in the house, the spirits have been in the house all this time, and, like, apparently the journal that was written, like, it detailed Marcus's death and what happened after he died. Okay. And apparently, like, they've been in the house this entire time, and they've been listening to everything, that's how they knew a bunch of, like, answers and shit. <sighs> so, then, like, mm. They're all like, well, the problem is clearly with Doris, because she's fucking possessed. And the priest is like, yo, we should, like, do an exorcism or some shit. And then they're like, wait, we should go back downstairs and see what's up. <sighs> yeah. But then, like, they all walk back downstairs, and suddenly the boyfriend, he's, like, hanging from sheets. He falls down, and he's hanging in, like, the middle of the hall. Which I think is something that happened in the first movie. Fucking sue me if I've got that wrong. And yeah, so they're all like, well, shit. And then suddenly they hear like music coming from the basement, like it's going through the vents or whatever. And they're just like, well, we should all stick together. And the daughter says, I think splitting up would be the dumbest idea possible here. Good one. So, they all go downstairs, and they see, like, the skulls and bones, like, they're in the hole in the basement. And then Lena says, we were playing on a graveyard this entire time. And they're not supposed to do that, I guess. But they burn the Ouija board in the furnace, so you're like, well, that shit is over with. Chill with it. But <laughs> then they hear... Like, their way into the secret room, I guess, is through a vent or some shit, and, like, the priest is like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna crawl through there and go find her, and they're like, what about not splitting up? And he's like, if she's in there, I'll get her. Way to avoid the question, dude. So he goes in there, and then, like, Doris is there, and he's like, he's like, you're not Doris, are you? And they're like, no. He's like, is she still here? Yeah. But he's like, I could help you. And all the, like... Doris is, like, talking in, like, multiple voices because a billion people have, like, fucking possessed her. And she then, she levitates up and, like, flies towards the priest. And then he comes crawling back out of the vent. And they're like, where's Doris? And he says, she's part of the walls now, but she showed me something incredible. And then his eyes are all whited out and, like, he's possessed. And then he goes after them with a fucking knife but, like, just before he stabs the mom, he comes back to himself, and then, like, he locks himself in the basement so he doesn't hurt anybody else, but then, like, Doris is on the ceiling, and she knocks him down the stairs, and his neck is broken, and he dies. Like, okay. And then, I believe, um, yeah, the, the daughter and the mom are trying to get out of the house, but the door is locked, 
because ghosts. And then, like, the mom gets knocked back into the living room, and <laughs> the the boyfriend who's just hanging in the front hall, like, he, like, he stretches down and, like, grabs Lena and, like, throws her up the stairs. And then, like, she looks down the stairs and Doris is there and she starts crawling up the side of the wall, like, for no reason. She, like, she didn't need to do that, but she did it anyway. And then the mom wakes up and she sees Doris is, like, whispering demonic shit into Lena's ear. And she's like, she's like, yo, don't take my daughters, take me instead. And then Doris is behind her and she's like, we'll take all of you. Ooh, shit. And then the mom gets knocked out and, like, dragged to the basement. And then she gets, like, she gets chained to a table or something. And, like, I guess while she's, like, while she's about to be, like, killed downstairs, Lena gets picked up by a dude. And it's, like, her dad's spirit is there. And then she sees, like... She sees, like, a flashback to, like, that shit with the doll and, like, the sewed-up lips. And she's, like, to stop the voices and shit, right? She's, like, I know what I gotta do. And, like, she sees her dad's spirit a couple more times. And she's, like, okay, I got this. And then she goes running downstairs. And her mom's, like, about to be killed. <laughs> and then Lena, like, takes a fucking stool and, like, she whacks Doris over the head with it. And it's pretty funny. And she's, like, she grabs, like, a, it's, like, a hook, like, a sewing hook from, like, the table. And she's, like, I know what I gotta do. I gotta sew her mouth, her mouth up to quiet the voices. And then Doris fucking screams at her with her demonic face. And, like, apparently she's got, like, superpowers because, like, it creates, like, wind that's strong enough to push her back. But she eventually gets to her and starts sewing up her mouth while, like, these fucking gimp demons are, like, trying to like grab at her and shit but she eventually succeeds and all the demons are fucking gone and like i guess they win but wait a second then the mom like she breaks her hands to get out of the like the handcuffs or like the shackles she was in and then she goes over to doris and she's like doris is fucking dead but she's with her dad like they get to see the dad again whatever and then <sighs> Lena's like, I had to, I had to sew up her mouth to stop the voices, and then all of a sudden, Lena is fucking possessed with the eyes, and then she takes the knife and stabs her mom with it, but then, like, she comes back to herself just in time to see what she's done, she's like, oh shit, no, but then, like, the mom goes, and, like, she's with the dad and the daughter in, like, the afterlife or some shit, and then... Then we cut to an institution where Lena is being held, and she's like, apparently they weren't able to find Doris's body, because I guess she's still in the basement, but they did find out that Lena killed her mom, so like, what, did she drag her mom's body out of, like, the secret room in the basement and left Doris there? Like, whatever. So, yeah. Then she's like, then she gets sent back to her room, and she's like, She's, like, voicing over in her head. She's like, I'm not alone. I'm never alone. And shit like that. And then she does some shit in her room. Like, she pulls up the carpet in a corner. And then, like, she bites her thumb, which apparently has a shitload of blood coming out of it. You know what? It cannot be that easy to bite your thumb and make yourself bleed. Like, you see it in anime all the time. Like, in Helsing and Naruto. It can't be that easy to just bite your thumb and make it bleed. Like... It can't be. But she does this, and then she starts writing out letters in blood, and then she breaks a pair of eyeglasses that she got from somewhere, and then she uses it in her hand as a plancha, and she's like, Doris, are you there? And then it cuts away to the doctor walking through the halls, and he passes by Lena's room, and you see, like, Doris sitting next to her, and he's like, wait a second. And then he goes back and, like, Lena's, like, looking straight through the glass at him, and he's like, well, whatever. And then the camera pans behind him, and Doris is, like, fucking walking on the ceiling, and she runs towards him, and then it goes black. Ah. <sighs> this movie's not bad, man. Like, I dare even say it's kind of good. Like, 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 the first movie looked like absolute shit. Like, 
just generic like oh they use a Ouija board and they get haunted by a fucking demon or whatever like who cares but then in this one like the characters are actual characters like if this hadn't been a horror movie where like everybody died like I probably still would have watched a movie about this woman like trying to make a living by scamming the fuck out of people with like her seances and shit it was interesting like like I'm I'm genuinely kind of impressed that this movie isn't complete shit, you know? Like it's not amazing, but it's it's not shit. You know what, like you should probably go see it, I think. Like if you're into this sort of thing, like it's a genuinely fucking scary horror movie. I I don't really think there's anything else to say about it. It's it's decent, you know? Like I see so many, like, horror movies that are absolute trash, like... <sighs> I'm just, I'm impressed, you know? It's... It's spooky. And... I wouldn't want to see it again, because it's fucking scary, but, you know... It's kind of legit. Yeah, I guess that's it. Bye.